Welcome to a stationary tips video on building a hot furnace on Europa that does not leak any heat once it's set up. All right, so here we have a configuration where we have an advanced furnace. It kind of sticks out just enough for the controls to be visible. Inside, you see we have the advanced furnace. We have the pipes connected up to a uh, insulated tank. Now this insulated tank could be anywhere. It could be on the side, could be behind it doesn't really matter but it just has to be connected both the in and the out connected to it on the bottom we have a steel frame around it we have uh, steel walls the steel walls gives us a 300 kilopascal um, pressure limit uh, inside there is a uh, passive vent pipe another pipe just just so we can peek inside for the pressure without using a uh, tablet we have a back pressure valve. It's currently set to 10 kilopascals and passive vent on the outside. So the first thing you want to do is, so this is designed to be done outside using the atmosphere for the initial get filling gas. Now once that's been enclosed, we turn this on and now we got to wait until the interior pressure drops down. And the reason for this is the gas inside will heat up. And if we don't do this step, um, when the tank gets uh, up to uh, temperature, it will heat the gas around it, which will uh, exceed 300 kilopascals and damage and finally uh, blow up the uh, one of the walls will come out. Now, if you use the reinforced walls, if you have that material already, you can build it around there. And if you do that, you don't need any of this. But that requires super alloys. And this is more of an earlier game uh, design um, before you even have super alloys. But if you're doing it late game or you're rebuilding it somewhere else and you do have uh, the ability to make uh, reinforced walls, they have a mega Pascal resistance. So you just have to wrap it, ignore all this stuff uh, and, and set it up. So we're just gonna wait until this drops all the way down. It takes a while. so. Once you get it going, it's best to go off and, you know, do something else for a while. All right, I think it's about the right amount of time. I don't see any gas coming out, and we'll turn this off. And 10.4, uh, close enough. All right, so the next step, I'm going to throw 30 volatiles and 15 oxide. Hit the magic button a bunch of times. And voila. Now, given my hope, my given my calculations are right, it will not blow up the tank. It'll get close, it'll go over, over 50 uh, megapascals. And just let that cook. What we're doing, wait for all the uh, volatiles and oxide to combust and hit maximum temperature. It will make noises. All right. On these two set of valves that you can turn on and off, the easy way to remember this is that. Top valve means gas goes up. Bottom valve means gas goes down. So if you want to move gas from the furnace up to the tank, use this one. If you move gas from the tank down to the furnace, use that one. So that should make that easier. Assuming that is you have the tank on the top and not, you know, scattered somewhere else. And we're hitting just about the limit. Yeah, it's almost burnt off. So we're just gonna be under the 60 megapascal limit. Now, if for some reason I added too much, what I could do is I could actually open it up to 100 and while it's still burning, dump gas into the uh, insulated tank and it'll still combust in there, but that will get the pressure down in the chamber if you need to do that. But in this case, if you use 30 and 15, then you'll stay under the limit, just barely. All right, hopefully if I did my calculations right. All right, so you see we're only at 177 kilopascals. So for temperatures, that may, and the temperature is 2.28 here and 2.28. Now at this point, if I go away for hours and hours and hours, it will maintain that temperature.
And since this is the maximum heat it can reach, you don't need this anymore. You could take this out if you really wanted to. Now, since we only hit 178, uh, I could have gone with maybe 12, maybe 14 kilopascal before I fired it up to get it up. So maybe a little higher. Because say you got up to 300 kilopascal limit here. And with this, you technically could use iron walls because I did not exceed 200 kilopascal. Iron walls have a 200 kilopascal limit. All right, so we hit max temperature. We're still safe. We don't need this anymore. You can remove it or leave it as needed. We now have a hot furnace. And as long as you put in degas ore, you will not affect anything inside. And you help, and this, and by degas gore, or I mean also things like uh, silver, gold, cobalt, all degas. Because if you throw in like cobalt, which has volatiles, and then you throw in some, uh, you know, silver, which I think has nitrox in it, you can boost the temperature even higher, and then you could exceed your uh, pressure limits here if you didn't figure out things right. So this design is everything is degassed. And one way to degas it is using an arc furnace, run it to an arc furnace, my other video for smelting and degassing. Or you have another furnace set up that you run things through to degas it just for that and run that manually. And voila, we have a hot furnace. Now, there are... This, this will allow you to smelt a number of uh, all the, all the um, normal ingots uh, and a number of the alloys can be smelted this way. And in some of these alloys have a pressure range. Well, that's simple because this is obviously a bit high and the pressure range would say between 20 and 30 megapascals will just move gas and drop the pressure down. I think I went too far. And now we're between 20 and 30. Now, you notice how fast that went. If you want more fine control, just kind of lower it down a little bit, then turn it on and off. And as I said, you know, if I miss it and went too far, and I need more gas in here, as I said, this one brings gas down. So put it there, turn it on, and the pressure starts going up. We're moving the gas down. Now, this ability to move gas back and forth will come in handy uh, when I make some additional furnaces for uh, other uh, alloys and super alloys that have very precise temperature requirements. But for now, this is the hot furnace. This is for everything that has sort of like, you know, from this temperature to un unlimited temperature. And you can step pressure however you want it by moving this around. Extra credit, you could put a chip on here, hook up a data port and have some kind of dial that said, you know, for this range, dial it and automatically operates the levers and puts in the right range. Um, this is not going to that type of um, coding. All right, so here we have a hot furnace and as you say, it's nine, it's holding. And that was pretty simple. Now, I will do videos for other planets, but in this case, it's basically the same thing. You want to inject a little bit of gas in here, fire it up, and then uh, you know make sure you don't exceed. Now, I could change this um, to like uh, we'll say uh, 200 and turn it on, which does nothing right now because it's under 200. But that way, you can set it. And that way, if it goes over 200, it'll start venting. The problem is, this is not a fast process. And this will heat up generally way faster than this can vent out that gas as it expands. And so it's, it's easier just to sort of maybe put a little bit of gas. Now, you can always reverse this. Let's say you didn't put enough gas in here. You put like, I don't know, five kilopascal to start, and you go, crap, I don't I'm still under 100. And thus, you're losing heat. You could just invert this, turn this into a uh, pressure regulator, and then push gas in here. So, 
set the pressure regulator to like, you know, 150. Now take the outside gas. It doesn't work on the moon. If you're on the moon, put a uh, canister holder and drop a canister or something in here or a ice crusher on here to get gas in here. But even there, and then pump gas in here to get the pressure temp, uh, pressure up past 100. All right, so I hope that explained building a hot furnace, at least specifically a simple way to do it on Europa. And as I said, this technique does map to everywhere else. Until next time, see ya.